brothers and sisters, you're welcome. So we have been dealing with the topic, the true riches, the true riches. And our text is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. I want to read from the English Standard Version. And it says, so if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Praise the name of the Lord. This was Jesus speaking to us. I'm going to very quickly recap a few points that we did uh, last Sunday, just again to bring everyone uh, to speed. So I'm going to share my screen. I will, I've captured the whole series of today uh, on uh, slides, so we'll be able to uh, run through with slides. So the true riches. The true riches is God's desire for his children to enjoy. We must establish this, even from that scripture. And there is a process to acquire true riches as contained in the Bible. The scripture that I read, Luke chapter 16, verses 11 and 12, there Jesus clearly established that there is a process. Because he said, if you've not proven to be trustworthy in handling the worldly riches or worldly wealth, who will commit to you the true riches? And he went on to say, if you're not faithful, which is the same word as trustworthy, in handling another man's property, who will give you your own? So there is a process to acquire true riches is contained in the Bible. Matthew 16, 19 calls this the keys of the kingdom of heaven, which we addressed. And... One Bible character that is a role model for us to learn the process of translating dream to reality, translating the, to, to achieving true riches is Joseph. And so last Sunday, we talked about Joseph's dream or vision and the four S's of Joseph's success keys, the four S's of Joseph's success keys. So we want to deal deeply with these four S's. Going forward step by step. Key number one is skill. Key number two is service. Key number three is self-discipline. And number four is sacrifice. We challenge ourselves to think back and look back at those dreams. Somewhere when we were children, God put those dreams in us, just like he put in Joseph. Joseph had the dream while he was about 17 years old. And he went on to fulfill that dream. And these are the four keys that helped Joseph to translate his dreams or his dream into reality. If you would also study these four keys and practice them, it will help you translate your dream into reality. And that's what we want to study. So starting with skill, what is skill? Skill, you could see the definitions uh, in dictionaries, but they won't be widely different uh, from what I've captured here. Actually, some would not be as comprehensive. Because so skill, uh, involves your talent and knowledge necessary to produce results. Talent and knowledge necessary to produce results. Service, the application of skills to meet needs. Self-discipline, actually pick this directly from um, a dictionary. Say correction to regulation of oneself for improvement and self-control. And you know I'm uh, in love with Mary and Webster Dictionary. So that's from Merriam Webster Dictionary. Corrections from regulation of oneself for improvement and self control. Sacrifice, 
We've talked about this before, giving up and surrendering oneself or something, etc., for godly purpose. So for your vision. Another way I always express this is to say it is to delay immediate gratification for greater fulfillment tomorrow. One typical example you talk about sacrifice is when you say to young people, stay pure, stay pure. In the area of sexual immorality, stay pure. Or you say to somebody who is working in an organization, don't steal your company's money. Hold on and grow in the company. You may end up being the MD and everything is in your hand. And even at that time, don't steal your company's money. You will be paid enough. You will have enough. And of course, if you learn these keys that we're talking about, you will have the true riches. Praise the name of the Lord. So sacrifice, giving up, delaying, waiting, surrendering oneself, something, etc., for godly purpose or for that ultimate goal. So I've already talked about Joseph being the role model whom we are going to study. Let's hit on a few key messages before we come back uh, to look at Joseph. We had read Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 to 11. Genesis 37, 1 to 11. There the Bible talks about Joseph's dream. He dreamt and he told his brothers. He dreamt the second time. And he told both his brothers and his parents. True riches, some keynotes, some keynotes that we need to pay attention to, which we mentioned that true riches requires one to have solid foundation of eternal life through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And you can get more uh, looking at uh, the book that uh, the Almighty God helped me to put together, which will be sharing free, it is free, uh, with the clear model, B-R-R-B-L. The book is titled, Who is a Christian? That a Christian is one who is like Christ, just like Christ. How do we become like Christ? By the Holy Spirit that God has given to us. Haven't applied that model, B-R-R-B-L. B means believe God and his son, Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the son of God who died for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the whole world. R then means repent. The first R, repent from your sins and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The second R means uh, ask God to give you the Holy Spirit and receive him, the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. The second B means that by faith, believe that you have received the Holy Spirit and have become a son or a daughter of God. You are not just an ordinary person. If you are a Christian, you have received the Holy Spirit transformation. You are not just an ordinary person. So believe that you, are, you have become a son or a daughter of God. And then the last L is live by faith and love. So this is the model. It is this life that we have received as we continue to live by faith and love that guarantees eternal life. So here, we're talking about the true riches that God Almighty has given to us as his children. How to manifest it is the keys that we're looking at. Point number two we should note is that the Holy Spirit plays a key role in developing and training us. The Holy Spirit plays a key role in developing and training us. So again, according to that model, having come to Jesus and you believe that you have received the Holy Spirit and thereby has become a son, a daughter of God, learn to walk closely with the Holy Spirit. He is our trainer, he's our developer, he's our counselor, he's everything God has given to us to achieve the true riches here on earth. Point number three to note is that how high one will enjoy true riches could be summarized as one's leadership, leadership. This is a key word, leadership. Probably not spoken a lot about, uh, but in, 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 in um, organized churches, but it is indeed 
um, what we really require. And Jesus Christ himself is an epitome of the perfect leader. And we're going to go studying that leadership model as well. So how high one will enjoy true riches could be summarized as one's leadership. You could say leadership capability, which is one's degree of influence. I told you about one of the leadership expert is John Maxwell. And he has, he has also written um, the uh, Maxwell Leadership Bible. I encourage you to read that. Personally, I define leadership as the sum total of one's impacts and achievements driven by one's skills set, talents and behaviors and the applications in serving people. The sum total of one's impacts and achievements driven by one's skills set, talents and behaviors and their applications in serving people. And who are the people we serve? We serve ourselves, our family, our organization, society, nation, and world at large. I know people who say self. Mm. Yes, Jesus said we should love our neighbors as ourselves, having first loved God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our minds. Point four to note is that hidden talent is useless so is hidden gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if you believe that you have talent, and I know everyone has talent, if you believe that you are a Christian and you have received the Holy Spirit, so you do have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Know that it is useless if you don't use it. So hidden talent is useless, so is hidden gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you don't go out to preach, and pray for the sick, you will not know that you have the gift of healing the sick, which is what Jesus said primarily we have to do. And these are the things that will bring your impact, bring my impact to the world. So hard work is required to hone and put the gift and talent to use. Hard work is required to hone and put the gift and talent to use. And this is how our impacts and achievements will uh, enlarge. I know this will challenge uh, those who are extreme on grace and misunderstand the scripture, and those who are also extreme on faith and don't want to work. So let's touch very quickly on work. Because the Bible says faith without work is dead. Remember, we are still heading for the four keys of Joseph, but these are key messages that we must uh, know. So hard work is important because when we're talking about skill, we are actually talking about work. So some key notes about work. We need to understand that the link between work and true riches, we need to understand the link between work and true riches, that God created man to work and you will see that in Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 9 and uh, 15. I believe we know that scripture. Maybe we'll look at it very quickly. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Then the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden, his word, in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. He put the man whom he had formed. And what was the man to do? Let's jump to that verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to turn and keep it. What did God want man to do? To turn and keep the garden. Praise the name of the Lord. It is one's work God blesses and increases. It is your work that God blesses and increases. Faith and grace are manifested in work. And I say real hard work. So if you are in doubt of this, ask Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 
and 11. I think I would like to read that very quickly. You know the scripture that Paul say, said there that he is the least of the apostles, that he is not even qualified to be called an apostle, but by the grace of God. He said he labored more than all, but not him, it was the grace. Let's look at that, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and 10. He said, for I am the least of the apostles whom I'm not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. So what is he saying there? He said that by the grace, he worked harder more than all. He said, yet not I. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. If you continue James chapter 2, 17, it says, faith without work is dead. Deuteronomy 7, 13 through 14, it says, the Lord will bless the fruit of your land your grain, your new wine, oil, etc. the fruit of your land. You have to sow for the fruit to come forth. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, God gives power to make wealth. He gives you power, he gives you the Holy Spirit, and it is you, it is I who have to work to make wealth. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul again there says, if anyone will not walk, neither should he eat. Praise the name of our God. So let's zoom in now on the skill set. The first skill that we want to deal with is this, uh, the, the four S's of Joseph, rather, the four S's of Joseph. And we want to deal with the skill of that S, the first S, which is skill. First S is skill. Praise the name of the Lord. But before that, let's look at a number of scriptures. Praise Jesus. Are we together? So, we read Genesis chapter 37, as I said, 1 to 11. And if you continue from 12 to 36, then you will see that Joseph was sold by his brothers. So, Joseph was sold by his brothers because he had a dream. Let me pause here and ask us, because I had told us to read that. What was Joseph's dream? What really was the meaning of it as far his vision? Can anybody open the line and tell me that? Brother Sonny, can you tell me what was Joseph's dream as per vision? What, how do you translate that Joseph's dream into vision? Yes? What would you say was Joseph's vision in life? Pastor. Go, go ahead, please. Morning, Pastor. Yes, uh, according to the Bible, uh, the dream of Joseph had to do with uh, leadership. Leadership, good. Go on. Any other points? From what we've seen there, uh, at, uh, yes, that is what I can pick from there. Yes. So a case where every other person, the father, the mother, and the sisters were like bowing down, uh, bowing down to him, that shows that he was to be a leader. And that he had proven that when he grew up, even when he was sold uh, as a slave to Egypt, he still displayed that uh, leadership quality. And he held on to his uh, vision that he had from the childhood. When he grew up, he never deviated because he knew where he was coming from. So that's what mm -hmm. I can and pick from it and where he was going thank you very much for that so again to emphasize so his leadership 
meaning that that person is in a position, is above other people? No. Leadership, as we had already defined, is the sum total of your gift, talent, impact, achieve that you use in creating impact and achievement, you know, in the society, to organizations and all that. So the sum total of one's influence. It is not when you're given a position. So indeed, I agree with you, leadership. So we can say that Joseph's vision from that dream was, number one, to be a, a preserver of life. He, is, he was to preserve life, as you would see. He was also to preserve posterity in the earth and a ruler of the people, to preserve life, to preserve posterity of Jacob, the Israelites on the, uh, in the earth, and a ruler of the people. So Joseph understood this dream and the skill set or the um, translation, the behavior, the character, the process of translating this dream into reality is what we're then looking at. So let's quickly look at the first S, which is skill, first S. Let's look at Genesis chapter 39. We'll just read verses 1 to 6, and then we will jump. So as I mentioned already, that Joseph was sold to uh, the Midianites by his brothers, and the Midianite took him to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar, to Potiphar. So this is now Joseph in Potiphar's house. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelite who had taken him down there. Verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. What is the similarity? What is the parallel between a Christian, one who has the Holy Spirit and Joseph here? It is that the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. It is that the Lord is with me. Hallelujah. It is that by the Holy Spirit, we have been transformed to the sons and daughters of God. God is with us. Jesus' name, Jesus' name is Emmanuel. And that means God is with us. So God is with you, brothers. God is with you, sisters. So just like Joseph, God is with you. So I read that verse 3 again. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did, all he did to prosper in his hand. Again, emphasis is all he did. If you do nothing, you will see nothing. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> God wants you to work hard, wants me to work hard, wants us to do something. It is in something that you do that God will bless, as we've already said. Four. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. What did he do? He served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put under his authority. Wow. Look at this. It looked as though it was a bad thing for the brothers to sell Joseph. No, 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 no. But it was God's strategy, God's arrangement for Joseph to get the training that he needs or that he needed to become whom God has created him to be, to make him fulfill that dream, that vision, the vision of being the preserver of life the preserver of posterity of Israel and the ruler of the people. Glory be to God. 
So here you see very quickly, God gave him opportunity to be trained up. He gave him a CEO opportunity very quickly. Hallelujah. He was an overseer. Oh, this is one thing that I see happening in the organized uh, uh, religion. People will be given the overseer position without any training. Absolutely no training. Like I was uh, telling somebody once that a province or a district of an organized religion will be equivalent to a mega multi-billion company. In fact, probably equivalent to uh, a whole national uh, uh, um, setup of a multi-billion company. Yet, people are thrown into this leadership role with absolutely no training to be able to carry out that function properly. So let's take correction. Let's take, we need to be trained. So Joseph was given opportunity quickly to be trained at the lower level as an overseer, as a CEO. Glory be to God. And Joseph did very well because of the trainings that he had already. So I read that verse 5 again. He says, so it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Glory be to God. So, where is that pit and where is that Potiphar's house that God has put you to train you up for the ultimate preparation for the vision, for the dream. You better recognize it. So very quickly, let's touch then on the skill that Joseph developed. The first S is skill, as we said. So the four S's of Joseph, skill, service, self-discipline, and sacrifice. So we take skill very quickly. As we've already seen there, that Joseph developed skill. So skill, again, we emphasize that it is the talent and knowledge necessary to produce results. The talent and knowledge necessary to produce results. So you have to recognize the talents you have, and you have to acquire knowledge necessary to produce results. That's what we call skill. There are a number of skills areas. We can write, break skills down into so many parts. I have captured four key areas of skills. And when you read the story of Joseph there, you know that Joseph was a very skillful person. The first area of skill that we have to develop is technical skills. And that can also be called problem solving skills. So what is that need, that problem area you can solve? You know, many people don't look at their technical skills from a point of problem solving. And that's why they're not giving the diligence that is required. Take, for example, somebody who is trained as a motor mechanic. I'm just using that, for example, for an illustration. A motor, a motor mechanic, does he realize that he is acquiring a problem solving skill that he is to solve a specific problem of, for people who have motor cars, vehicles, 
and there are various problems that the vehicle will have. And when people have such problems, they will come to him, the problem solver, and he is to solve that problem. So technical skills. Number two, people skills. People skills, this can be broken down to so many areas of skills. But I just put the two broad area, relationship and networking skills. Relationship and networking skills. In fact, it could even be relationship or networking skills. Is where what I call people skills. There are some people who are very good with the technical skills, but terrible with people who handling. You only meet them once and you don't want to meet them again. Then business skills, the broad one, economic and finance. But there are various business skills. I will put skills like managing projects also under business skills, business skills. And then marketing or sales skills. There are people who are good in one, two, three, but they are so poor in marketing. Nobody knows what they are doing. They cannot sell their products. They cannot sell themselves. I'm not talking about the selfish projection of one. No, I'm talking about the necessary information that you need to give and create the awareness. I'm talking about the necessary presentation of quality that people need. So this skills set, Joseph had it. And the Bible says in that verse three that, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in the sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. See, he was not overseer in the one. It was the skills that Joseph demonstrated and produce results, skills, the talent and knowledge necessary to produce results that the master saw. It is those who have the skill and are applying it that will find the grace of God working. So the Bible says something about diligence. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, I believe many of us can quote that scripture. And let's look at it as we take a, a pause for discussion. Proverbs chapter 22, I so like Matthew. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, what does it say? Do you see a man diligent in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Diligence is very important, brothers and sisters. That is one word in developing skills that you must pay attention to, we must pay attention to. Some people will go to learn skills, but they never, never understand skills from a problem solving uh, 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 point of view. And they don't even pay attention to this a full set of skills. So their skills can be uh, of value and produce the results that they need. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4 says about diligence. So that's the key word that you must learn. We must learn as we pay attention to skills development. Proverbs 13, 4 says, the soul of the slugger desired and had nothing but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If we jump to Proverbs 
chapter 27, verse 23 says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy heads. Diligence. Diligence. It says, The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. Proverbs 21, 5. But of everyone that is hasty, only want. Praise the name of the Lord. Proverbs 18, 16, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. You want to grow. You want to fulfill your dream. You want to become large in your organization, in your family, in your society. You want to make that impact. You need to develop skill and utilize it. Gift here, often people think is uh, you giving a gift to a man. If it was that, I think the scripture probably would have used gift. Yes, indeed, that's also um, a good practice, especially when we're talking about relationship skills. Actually giving gift. But here, the Bible is talking about your gift, your talent, the skills you have developed that it will make room for you and it will bring you to the top. People are looking for people that have skills that can solve their problems. People are looking for people that have skills that can bring them result, like Joseph did in Potiphar's house, for them to entrust real, real opportunities to. Two biggest negatives to avoid, two biggest negatives to avoid are complacency and laziness, complacency and laziness. Some people will say, oh, for, for complacency, you see, that is how I am. No, that is not how you are. You can always improve yourself. And as we saw there in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4, it says, the soul of the slugger, that is the lazy person, desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. How do you develop skills? We're going to take assignment and we'll come back to that. This week, review your skill set. Which of the skills areas do you want to develop from what we have said there? So this is how you develop skill. Get materials online, books, and start studying. Enroll in training programs, even if it means to volunteer. In fact, I will recommend volunteering is the easiest way. There is nobody you come to and say, see, I can do this thing for you for free. That will not say, I'll try now, except uh, you look like a criminal. And the person says, no, no, I'm not sure. Maybe you're coming to steal. But once they try you and you demonstrate diligence, you find that that makes a way. I know of a brother who is very, very senior person now today. That's how he started work. After NYSC, he didn't have work. And he went to a company and volunteered. He said, I can do this thing. They, gave him, they didn't even give him the opportunity. He just on his own get crashed, if you want to put it that way. I was helping and helping till uh, one day, uh, somebody who ought to do a certain thing wasn't around. And he said, hey, give me that opportunity. I can do it for you. And he did it so well. From there, he was given opportunity. Get a coach stroke teacher. So this week, review your skill set and do this. This is the assignment we will do. Let me pause here and let's take the discussion. What are your questions? Yes, go ahead, Brother Dara. Good morning, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. So uh, I think your closing statement is where I want to pick up from. Uh, that people are always uh, that people are always in need of uh, someone who will help them solve their problem. Yes. If we grow the right skill, we'll be able to um, find out. I mean, solve problems, and then uh, God's blessings will come upon us through our work. The yes. question I want to ask is um, maybe you throw a bit more light, like this assignment. Are there specific avenues to get information about people who who 
who have the challenge that you can solve. Let you have a skill and you, you're not sure the place where you find people who have the problem that you have the capacity to solve. Thank you, thank you. Excellent question. In fact, that brings me to a key point uh, that I need to make. Thank you. See, the Holy Spirit is helping us because I forgot to make that point. Now, everything is hinged on your dream, your vision, remember? The vision, so the skill sets, particularly the problem-solving uh, skills that we're talking about should be tailored towards the fulfillment of your vision, of your dream. That's what I was trying to bring out from Joseph there, that Joseph immediately, because what, as we said, his vision was what? To become the ruler of the people, to preserve uh, the posterity of Israel and to preserve life, to preserve life, to preserve the posterity of Israel and to be the ruler of the people. He quickly got trained as an overseer, overseer. So the skill set and he was serving people. You see, the nature of Joseph's training was around serving people. He served the officer of Pharaoh. And from there, he developed the skill of serving people. So key point number one is that you must set the vision Pray, as I said, if you have no dream, you have no vision, and that will be sad, but pray for God to guide you. And said anything good that you said to do is good. It is not fasting and prayer that you need to set vision. You know, there are so many needs that is there for people to solve, to, to meet, to set the vision. Now, when you set the vision then, the skill you need to develop as I've, I've enumerated a number of skill areas, but in each of those, particularly in the problem solving, there are specific areas of technical skills that you need to develop. Uh, so that should tie to your vision, what you really want to do. And then couple with all the other, in all those four areas, couple with all the other areas, of skill, but specifically in the technical skill area, it's got to be specific to the um, aspect that ties to your dream. Um, but of course, it's not just one that you have to do so you can have various skills that you develop. The second part of your question, you're talking about, are there ways to find out where the needs are which you have your skill? I've already mentioned that it is in that other skill. It's still on you. Yes, internet, Instagram, everywhere is there now, but it's still on you to use this marketing and sales skill to capture your own skill and then also match the other opportunities. So it requires really making the effort. So uh, to, to look at the materials. Uh, take, for instance, um, somebody who is into um, doing the building work, right? You will not just sit down and then find somebody comes to find you that you can do, let's say, tiling so well, or you can do the design of a house so well, right? You've got to. Um, Put something out for yourself that shows what you can do. Your flyer, your card, the description of your work, right? And then you reach out. Both physically go into areas where people are building, as well as putting it online. Social media is the place to be now. I guess 
that's probably where you were driving us towards. So you being there as well as also looking out for others who are there. So I hope that uh, gives a, a broad brush of the question you asked. Anybody yes, can also add, thank you. Yes, Brother Dara. Thank you, sir. Any other comment, any other question? The first S, skill. Sonny, please go ahead. Good morning, Pastor. Yes, go ahead, uh, Brother Sonny. Good morning. Uh, yeah, uh, Pastor, I want to start by thanking you for the for the series, this particular uh, series today. I think uh, the whole teaching has actually opened my eyes in certain areas that I couldn't just uh, get it very clear. But I think at the end of your discussion today, I've learned a lot to realize that um, these four things, these four things are key when it comes to our success in life. Uh, yeah. Leadership cannot actually be achieved if we don't have uh, the skill. And if we have the skill and we lack uh, discipline, we cannot actually influence those that we're supposed to lead. And then our success might not actually be achieved also. Indeed. So these four things work together. In the case of Joseph that you just mentioned, as an example, uh, you see, he, he was disciplined. One thing I've really realized this morning from what you've said is that this Joseph was a disciplined young man because there was a time while he was in the master's house that so many bad things happened to him. For example, the, the father, the, the, the master's wife have to, you know, try to force him to sleep with her, which I think it was out of uh, discipline Indeed. that he has and the fear of God. That's that right. Indeed, we are coming. We are coming there, Sonny. We are, we are coming temptation. there. We are we are coming there. Indeed, you're 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 right. You're right. Okay. You're right. Yeah, we're we're and, coming there. So we just want to concentrate on skill today. Yeah, because okay. like I said, we want to take it bit by okay, bit. Pastor. Yeah. So thank you very much for All that right. contribution. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. So let me make uh, or any other comment. Uh, while Sonny was talking, I remember a point uh, I, to tie this skill. You know, there is sometimes people will talk about leadership skill. I find that the whole skill set in those four boxes that we have just discussed indeed really defines leadership. That's why you have seen I have not put leadership skills separately, but it's indeed important. You need the technical skills, you need the people skills, business skills, marketing skills to indeed uh, say that you have leadership skills. So this, the, for me, they roll up together to form the leadership skills of a person. And the more you can enlarge deepen and enlarge in these areas also um, expands and enlarges your leadership skill. So that's the point to note. Leadership skill is the overall overarching skill that we need. Uh, but this, uh, uh, this four roll into that, just to make that point. Please, any other comment, any other contribution, any question? before we pray. Yes, Hello, Sister Pastor. Gertrude. Yeah, God bless you. Yes, Please yes. go ahead. Uh, for me, I'm really interested in this uh, people's uh, skill, that's relationship and networking. Okay. And um, how do we develop this more and more? Just like okay. Joseph developed it. Joseph found himself in Potiphar's house. And I don't think he had in mind he was going to lead his people. He was going to hate you know, when he had all those dreams. But the way God was taking him, God was training him from one step to the other. And then he found himself in Potiphar's house and he was trained to serve 
and to <laughs> lead people there, the households, uh, those who are working in the house. But Indeed. now, if, yeah, if I want to develop this area because I'm interested in it, what things did you say? You say you should get materials online. Yes. Get get a coach. I yes. didn't get the other ones. No, the okay. other ones that um, you you mentioned. Okay, so that you get materials online, books, and start studying the particular area of skill that you want to develop. Enroll in training programs, get a coach or a teacher, and then lastly, I said volunteer. Volunteer, okay. yeah, volunteer to practice. You need to practice. You need a space to practice. And that brings us to skill, I mean, uh, the second S of Joseph, which is what we're going to talk about next Sunday which is service. But we'll dig a bit deeper into some of these skills as well, and also try to pull materials that will help, like you've just asked. But those are the four things uh, you need to do. Yeah? And yeah, so review your skill set and decide which one you want to develop, just like you have rightly done. So uh, I will take note of that, people, and uh, the other question that was asked around uh, how to match, where do you really seek out what uh, your skill set matches? Yeah, I think we'll still touch a bit on that. So that's, uh, those, those are the four areas. Thank you. I hope that addresses your question. Any anything on Facebook? Any comment? Any other? Okay, our time is up. We want to wrap it up here. We want to pray now and close. Maybe you've joined and you have not given your life to Jesus, wherever you may be. As you have heard, Joseph was confident in his God, and his God helped him. The Spirit of God plays a very important role in helping us develop these skills and develop these keys that we have talked about. Yes, many people train themselves. You work on it. And I tell you, it's easier with the Spirit of God. Unfortunately, many people have not been using, applying the grace, the Spirit of God in these areas. Rather, they want to fast and pray and then just expect things to happen. That's not the way the process God has provided. God has provided work and has provided this leadership behaviors for us to develop and as we do that, we will see the favor of God. We will see the grace manifesting. And our prosperity that God has kept for us will come. The Holy Spirit gives us strategy. So it's very important. And for you to have the Holy Spirit, you have to give your life to Jesus. So we're going to pray those two prayer points. And so one, if you're connected here, just go ahead and pray and surrender your life to Jesus. And then the second part is that the Spirit of God will help us to develop any skill that we desire. And as we go on practicing, and that should help us have the right vision, the right vision. And of course, just like Joseph, we'll pray for God's favor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we pray for anyone here that has not given his or life to Jesus Christ. And right now, we ask, Lord, as he or she surrenders his life to you, forgive all sins, all iniquity, all errors, all transgressions, all offenses. Forgive, Lord, and save that life now. Give your Holy Spirit 
to him or her and let that life be transformed to the glorious life of the son and daughter of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Father God, we pray that by your spirit, help us to develop the skills set that we need to fulfill your purpose for our lives. Lord, we pray by your spirit, O oh God, that you give us the vision. Give us understanding of the vision that you have created us to fulfill in life. Thank you, Almighty God. Holy Spirit, I ask that you teach us the strategy to make true riches in this life, to use it and glorify God, to do the will of God. Thank you, our Lord and our King. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, I pray one more time for all these, your children. Today is the 30th of May, and in this month of May, we stand up against every oppression in our lives. I ask, Lord, that no oppression will follow us beyond today, beyond this moment. Let every oppression in our lives and families be terminated now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, that month of June that is coming, oh, it is our month of flourishing. I pray, Lord, that you go before us and bless the month of June for us and bless us in the month of June and cause us to flourish greatly. Thank you, our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Brothers and sisters, you shall be a prosperous fruit in that month of June to the glory of God in Jesus' name. The Almighty God bless you. And this is where we draw the curtain and we say bye-bye.